Hello, Erica. My name is Johan, and today I'm gonna read a reading book from page 54 to 56. The year is 1903. Lewis and Clark are planning their expedition to explore the territory west of the Mississippi River. Lewis is looking for a dog to accompany the expedition, and as the story opens, he meets a 150-pound Newfoundland dog named Seaman, who goes on to tell of their adventures. Seaman! I glance at the man beside me. Look alive, your spires. Something caught my attention beyond him. Down the wharf, a group of men, but I only saw one. It was Lewis. He was a full head taller than any other man I have known on the docks. And he was dressed in a different way. White breeches and a short blue coat with buttons that shone in the sun. A tall pointed hat with a feather made him look even taller. Lewis walked along the dock with a large stride. There was a purpose about him. My life on the wharves was good, but I was a young dog and yearned for more. At the time, I didn't know exactly what. I sensed that this man was part of what I wanted. I sat, I sat straighter as he approached me. The man who owned me stood straighter too. Lewis slowed. Need a dog, sir? My man asked. I look in, Lewis replied. He stooped down and looked me right in the eye. I wagged my tail and stepped forward. I wanted to sniff the strange man. He extended his hand for me. He didn't smell like any I ever smelled. And it made me want to stiffen all over. Lewis scratched the back of my neck where I like to be scratched. I'm headed out west up the Missouri River, Lewis said. My man slays right to me. This dog be perfect, sir. These dogs can swim, Newfoundland dogs. They called them, rescued a drowning man in rough water or in the storm. Look at these paws. You won't find another dog with the paws like that. They webbed. He spread my toes to show the webbing. So they are, Lewis replied. Lewis began to feel my chest and hindquarters. His hands were large and muscular. Water rolls up this coat, man added. He pulled up a handful of my thick, dense double coat. Lewis examined my coat and nodded. I know the Mississippi, sir, but I don't know the Missouri, my man, my, my man said. It is off the Mississippi, heading northwest. North, you say? Ah. It'll be cold up that river. Won't bother this one, though. He patted me firmly on the back. Lewis stood and looked around. He found a piece of wood that had broken off a crate. He showed it to me and threw it. Go, he said. I wanted to go. I wanted to do whatever this man asked. But I belonged to another. I looked at my man. Go on, he said. I ran for the stick. And return it to Lewis. How much? Lewis asked. Twenty dollars. And a bargain at that. Lewis looked down at me. I lifted my head proudly. Won't find a better dog than this. Perfect for your trip. My man said, trying to convince Lewis. It wasn't necessary. Lewis wanted me. I could tell he had liked me the minute he saw me. The feeling was mutual. Lewis pay, paid my man twenty dollars. Does he have a name? Lewis asked. I've been calling him Simon. You can name him anything you like. Come on, Simon. Lewis called. As he as we walked away, my rope in his hand, he put his other hand on my head. 
After that, he didn't need a rope. I will follow this man to the ends of the earth. The dog was of the Newfoundland breed, uh, breed one. I prize so much for his doxability. Docility and qualifications generally for my journey. Mirror Weather, Lewis, November 16, 1803. Thank you for listening.